Egypt has experienced rapid population growth in recent decades. Between 1986 to 2018, the number of people in the country doubled. If the current rate of population growth continues, the number of Egyptians will reach 190 million by 2050. Such calculations were published by the Director of Demographic Center of the Ministry of Planning and Development, Amira Traudros. So that people do not live in, so to say, cramped conditions, the government wants to limit the number of children in families to two. Perhaps this will help solve the problem of overpopulation for future generations. But how can the tension in the most populous country in the Arab world be relieved now? According to experts, if the Sinai Peninsula was inhabited, it could unload the Egyptian cities. Now it is a barren desert, crisscrossed by mountains. But once in its place was a green oasis with lush vegetation. Based on some historical documents, 4,500 to 8,000 years ago, Sinai could boast of fertile land with forests, meadows, and numerous lakes. Ancient rock paintings found on the peninsula depict trees and plants. And in the records of the 1,500-year-old St. Catherine's Monastery, located at the foot of Mount Sinai, calculations of the amount of wood were found. The desertification of vast areas of the region has obviously occurred as a result of human activity. Deforestation, overgrazing, and intensive farming have destroyed ecological chains and caused irreparable damage to the landscape. The loss of vegetation affects the land's ability to retain moisture. The soil loses its structure and is washed out, hence the silt in Lake Bardawal. According to some estimates, there is a catastrophic amount in the lake, about 2.5 billion cubic meters of silt. Thijs van der Hoven, an eco-engineer from the Netherlands, however, is optimistic. He believes that a wide range of environmental measures can save this barren area. Van der Hoven convinced the Egyptian government of the need of the implementation of such a massive project. Then, together with his team, he began to develop it. The engineer has accumulated considerable successful experience in this direction. So, he participated in the creation of artificial islands in Dubai. Later, at the DEME Belgian company, Van der Hoven created an innovative dredging method. His proposal to deepen the reservoirs turned out to be more environmentally friendly and efficient than others. His methodology, in particular, used low-cost sensors to simulate sea conditions in real-time, waves, currents, and ebbs and flows. This way, experts determined where and when work can be carried out with maximum safety for people and the environment. Thijs van der Hoven is now one of the leaders of the Weather Makers Company. The team is engaged in the restoration of large ecosystems of the planet. Recently, experts have already presented a ready-made mega-project to turn Sinai into fertile, flowering land. The plan of unprecedented proportions consists of five stages. The first one is filling the shallow and saline Lake Baudouel with water. It is proposed to deepen certain parts of the lake and the bays around it, increasing water exchange with the Mediterranean Sea. Unique eco-machines are also designed to revitalize the water in Birdawal. It is essentially a living technology developed by project member marine biologist John Todd. The mechanism of machines is extremely simple. Their model is just a series of barrels with mini ecosystems of algae, plants, bacteria, fungi, worms, insects, and fish inside. In some ways, Todd says, these ecosystems reflect the cumulative experience of life on Earth over the past 3.5 billion years. The principle of operation of eco-machines is that water is poured from one container to another. It is cleaned by the living organisms of the ecosystem, and the sediment is left in the upper barrels. So, the water gets cleaner as it flows. In Sinai, water from the lake will be pumped to the hills 50 kilometers from the coast. From there, it will be passed through a network of eco-machines and returned clean to Bardawal. Nevertheless, the water that powers the eco-machine will be salty. But the condensate inside the system will be fresh, so it is suitable for irrigating plants. To induce rain inside the system, knocking on it from the outside will suffice. Plus, Van Hoven posits that the salinity of the sediment will actually be an advantage. It retains all the nutrients that rinsing through eco-machines activates. In the second stage, it is proposed to restore the wetlands of the region. Here, the creators of the project are counting on the help of the countries of the Ramsar Convention. This is an intergovernmental agreement on the conservation and wise use of water systems, as well as their resources. In Sinai, 
it is necessary to fill the dried up lowlands in the south of the peninsula with water and protect the floodplains from industrial fishing in order to restore the land. If after that salt resistant plants are planted along their banks and around Lake Bardewell, then the ecosystem will be even more strengthened. Now van der Hoven's team is conducting experiments on the selection of species of such plants. Specialists will select those that are best rooted in the conditions of Sinai. However, in the next stage, it is planned to plant greenery not only on the banks of the water bodies, but also on the entire desert. But there will inevitably be difficulties due to a lack of water. The weathermakers hopes to compensate for the lack of moisture with several modern technologies, such as fog nets. The system of so-called horizontal rain can be used at higher elevations to collect fresh water from the air. A group of hills rise 700 meters above sea level, 35 kilometers south of Lake Bardwell. They are perfect to apply fog catchers, and to store the available water at the last stage, small concrete dams will be built. It is also planned to build dams from clay material obtained as a result of work to deepen the lake. Despite such a detailed plan, the revival of Sinai may seem like science fiction to you. After all, more than 60,000 square kilometers of land will have to be brought back to life. Skeptics have serious doubts that this is even possible. But there are already precedents in history. We are talking about the landscaping of the Los Plateau, located in five provinces in northern China. The size of this huge plateau is almost equal to the territory of France. In the recent past, the Los Plateau was very similar to the Sinai, with its dry, barren, heavily eroded landscape. Beijing has implemented an ambitious project to restore this desert. It was led by the famous Chinese scientist Li Ri. A network of 11 dams and catchment areas were created on the plateau for cities and agriculture. As a result of irrigation, the land came to life. To give it time to finally recover, ecological farming was introduced in the area. Its concept included the enrichment of the soil with organic fertilizers. What is more, the soil also improved after the planting of forests, which helped sequester vast amounts of environmentally harmful carbon. At the same time, part of the sown area has significantly decreased, which reduced water consumption. Despite the reduction in farmland, total grain production has increased. The fertile soil made it possible to collect incredible crops, 100-300% to more than before. The terraces created after this further contributed to the cultivation of cotton, millet, wheat and other crops. Incomes of local farmers doubled. All of the above-mentioned stages of the revival of the Laos Plateau are shown in the film by Beijing TV journalist John Liu. Moreover, Liu filmed the important implementation of similar projects in Africa, South America and the Middle East. All this has brought tremendous benefits for the inhabitants of individual countries and the planet as a whole. The joint efforts of governments, businesses, environmentalists and enthusiasts help to realize such ambitious plans there is already a similar convergence of forces around the incredible Sinai Desert Reboot project. In addition to the enthusiasts of the weathermakers, the Egyptian government and international organizations are ready to implement the plan. So we will certainly witness how the dead land of Sinai came to life. And we will see on it meadows covered with greenery, fields of ears of various cultures, and wealthy cities.